Hey, Gator Nation. Welcome back to the Respect Our Decision podcast. It's January the 19th, and this is your boy, Hirsch. And with me, as always, is Mike. What's going on? And the hype man, Wes. What's up? Doing my Josh Pate. He's there. (laughs) All right, guys. We've got a lot to talk about tonight. You know, it's been a busy week. Not a lot of great news, but some good news out there. We're going to talk about it all. As always, guys, make sure you go out there and download us wherever you get your podcast from. And as always, guys, check us out on YouTube. And if you if you could, you know, subscribe to the channel. Give us a like. Hit the notification bell for every time we drop new content. Going to be a lot of stuff coming up. And as always, guys, if you'd like to support us as creators, check us out on our Patreon. Respect our decision. Each and every dollar we make from our Patreon goes back to make sure that this show gets better and better every week. And before we get jumping, guys, we want to just go ahead and give a big shout out to our sponsor, All Star Roof of Georgia. Guys, I know there were just a bunch of storms up there in the Georgia Atlanta area. If y'all are looking for some roof repair, a brand new roof or gutter repair, gutter installation, make sure you hit up our guys at allstarroofs.com, enter promo code RESPECT100 and get $500 off a brand new roof for your house. Hey, the taxes are coming out soon, man. Get that roof fixed. (laughs) All right, guys. We're going to jump right into some stuff here. But real quick, man, we want to give y'all, our listeners, an absolute huge shout out. We just got our numbers back from 2022. And as you know, you know, we didn't we didn't have a whole lot going on. You know, we didn't start till late, right before the season 2022. We only had 36 episodes, but in that short time frame, you guys helped us become uh, a top 10% of all shows hosted on our platform, Buzzsprout. 38 countries the show's listened to in, and we can't thank all of y'all enough. It just blows my mind to know that there's people in all those countries in Switzerland checking out the Respect Our Decision podcast and probably hearing my accent and being like, what the hell is wrong with this guy? (laughs) 22,600 downloads. My Lord, guys. We can't say thank you enough from all of us. Wes, Mike, myself. Thank you so much, guys, for supporting us, getting us to where we are, and hopefully making 2023 a much, much bigger year for the Respect our decision. And with that being said, guys, you know, with the good comes the bad. We don't shy away from any of it. We talk about everything. And we're going to jump right in with the biggest news of the week that you, you know, unless you were under the rock, you had to have heard about it. It's on every platform, whether it be Sports Center. Uh, I'm sure the Wall Street Journal's got a damn article about it by now. Jane Rashada and the alleged. $13 million NIL deal that went bad, went south. Oh, boys. Mike, you want to lead us off? I know you're itching to get going, man. Um, well, I'm just glad the shit show's over, man. It's, uh, you know, it's definitely going to – definitely had a ne- negative effect on the fi- cycle. We talked about it a little bit uh, last week, but now it's official – it's um, we don't have, you know as of right now we don't have a quarterback for um, high school quarterback for this cycle, um, essentially two cycles now because of Max Brown, um, but or blue, blue chip I'll be nice, so that's you know two cycles of an ability to uh, tenure. It's gonna have no uh, high school quarterbacks, so it's definitely not good for the room in terms of numbers, and just you have to ask yourself how much. Is this negative press going to hurt the program? You know, uh, you said uh, ESPN. Like, it was on their, like, premiere show, I want to say, with Scott Van Pelt. You know, uh, Josh. uh, Pete Thamel was on on there talking about it. I saw the segment. Literally everyone's hitting it. Um, It is what it is. You know, it wouldn't be a normal Gator offseason without drama. So, I mean, you know, I'm pretty weathered with this. So, I mean, what do you think, Wes? Um, it's a bad look. Um, no matter what 
or who fault it was. I mean, you can look at, you can blame, there's plenty of people to blame in this situation, in my opinion. It's a lot from both sides. Um, but it's just, it's a horrible look on the program. Like you said, it's on Sports Center. It was uh, on the bottom of the little tracker, that thing that they have down there. Uh, it was on uh, the ESPN homepage on, on, on the internet. Um, it's on all the message boards. Uh, people are trolling us about it. Um, it's just a horrible look. Um, and it speak to it as far as what it means as far as the state of the program. Um, like you just mentioned, like we miss two quarterbacks essentially in the cycle. I mean, whether you want to count Max Brown or not, we kind of don't. Hopefully, he doesn't have to play a down at, at Florida. Uh, but that, I mean, you mean the baseball player. Yeah, yeah. He, <laughs> he said he's going to play baseball. So, uh, I mean, it's just bad. I mean, I, I don't know what else to say about it uh, other than as far as the program is, it's horrible. It's another, more bad press. And it seems like every week since uh, Lagway committed, it's been nothing but bad news uh, as far as uh, we are concerned. Even t- even when we get good news, when we get a transfer in, uh, like the Baylor kid that we love, that will probably be our starting guard next year, is not even talked about. Oh, we got Jackson from uh, Memphis. Those things kind of die down because of bad. You know, people, you know how it is, how America is right now. Uh, the world is. You can do something good, and you get a little bit. If something bad happens, it's talked about everywhere, and that's just how the state of the program is. It seems like it's a dark cloud over us right now, and and the only thing I don't know how we get out of it, and uh, unless we win ball games, and, and Georgia winning the championship doesn't help. So, um, unless you have it, Hirsch. Um, first off, I want I want to start with one point. Who's to blame? Everybody's to blame. Everybody involved with this was to blame. Don't. Did the Gator Collective share some blame? Sure. Absolutely. They were involved. But does the other camp deserve some blame? And I know Mike has heard this as well. Uh, The Rashada camp heard about all this well before he signed his letter of intent to come to the University of Florida. Nobody held a gun to his head and said, sign this letter of intent. So, I mean, (laughs) if you knew the deal wasn't what you wanted or wasn't what you were promised, why did you sign your letter of intent? I mean, these are questions that you're not going to see, though, on SportsCenter. You're not going to see, you know, out there in these articles that are being written. It's just part of it. Um, So, and I'm not here to defend anybody's side. Everybody to me was, that was involved in this was, there was wrongdoing all the way around. I don't blame, the one person I don't really blame in all this is Jaden Rashada because I believe he just wants to play football. I know a lot of people say, oh, the kid's greedy. He wants that much money. But you know what? I don't know. And I don't know, you know, the number 13 million is out there. I wasn't there when the deal was agreed upon, uh, negotiated, any of that. But if somebody wants to pay me $13 million to come play football, I'm not going to say no. If somebody wants to pay me, if you're that kid and somebody says, I'll give you seven, eight million dollars. I'm not gonna say no. I mean, Mike, you got something you wanted to add to that? Yeah, so I mean, like you like you said, the negative negative press, like we've ruined the kid's life. Um, once again, <laughs> he didn't have to sign here. There was no con there was no NIL deal in place. He had one on the table there working on it was a support a substantial amount. So it wasn't like you know, he was getting pennies. Uh, may not have been thirteen. Oh and yeah, we've you've I've seen that all day. Is that we've we've ruined his possibly life. ruined his academic. You know, put his whole future in jeopardy was a term I saw. Yeah, um, but unfortunately, you know, it is what it, it is. What it is. Uh, we are the prior right prior right now, and also like last cycle, Texas A and M or Texas eight or ATM. A lot of people refer to them too. They're known for just what they did last cycle and they, until another for the, for the foreseeable future, they will be known as that. Okay. 
Now, UF is no, since we are the only, this is inevitable, but of course, you, you, this occurs to UF, we're the only one who really screwed up in the NIL deal. So we are we, now rep, the representation of what's wrong, potentially the worst case scenario with NIL. And uh, uh, fair or not, it, we represent NIL illiteracy. Guys, how do you how do you think this will affect uh, recruiting going forward? If you're a prospect now, are you are you hesitant to sign a deal with UF, thinking, "Oh, am I am I not going to get what I'm promised?" No, because you have guys, you have examples on. In my opinion, you have examples of uh, current players who can speak to them getting what they were supposed to get. So, and we and we signed a big class, and I'm sure some of those guys signed in uh, the NIL deal. So you the proof is there that just one off, but it can be looked at other schools that are going to negatively recruit you. Hey, Florida. Oh, every has, every school is going to negatively yeah, recruit so you. Every they, single they, one. They, that will be brought <laughs> up, but it, but you have to have uh, you have to be prepared for that and have guys on campus that you know when these guys host other. It's known that when guys come on campus, somebody from that position groups host you. So you have to have guys uh, who were there before, like uh, Gabron, uh, her hosted Kelby Collins. Hey, man, I got everything I was promising my NI deal. That's how it goes. So you have to have guys that can speak to saying, hey, I'm getting what I was supposed to get. That was just a hiccup. I know it was blowing proportion. If you have any thoughts about, hey, they're not going to give me what they promised, I got what I was supposed to get. So that's how you uh, defeat that. In my opinion, Mike, any thoughts you want yeah, to I mean, counter with? Wes has phenomenal points, with, with except I'm I want to have a question for you, Wes. Mm -hmm. You said no without a, without a blank. So there's no if you're a recruit, your your son, best QB in the country, right, or one of the best. There's there's no trepidation at all. You only as a parent. Yeah, hold on. Uh, I I. I I feel like when it comes to that, um, it may be brought up, but we, we have DJ Lagway, right? So he For now. obviously. And, 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 and I'm not thinking, and I don't think DJ's going anywhere, but that's what you're, that's how people will frame it right now. Well, they have him for now, but. Yeah. <laughs> and he was committed. This all occurred after he committed. So I'm just saying for a future 2025 kid. Right, there's at least there's no trepidation. You're not gonna ask a couple more people than you would originally think. Ask, come on. I don't think it's the kids you have to worry about. Yeah. I think it's both. I think well, I well, think well, primarily it's how gonna be all the kid is. Um, certain kids like um, you know, like Rashad, they're not involved at all, if any. But if it should be, you know, a mutual, it should be majority of kids, but the parents should be looking out for them. Or someone in your camp that has their best interests. Not to triple check University of Florida right now is highly irresponsible. Period. Fair, like, end of the day, we may have not been solely to blame, but we are at blame. That brings me to my next point I wanted to make. Go ahead. Does this bring widespread change is this the event i feel like we've been waiting for something good bad and different to happen that absolutely changes the recruiting landscape at florida is this that event does, um, does it change the boosters involvement does it change does it I mean, I, I, I mean, know, I'm, I know it's very. I, I here's a here's a funny thing. I was told when Rashad went to Miami, that was the thing. So no, until further further notice, and at, go every everyone complains Jeremy Foley did this, and some of his minions are still around. That little and I was I, I keep being told certain things. Oh, all, but Billy, all all of Foley's guys are gone. Remember hearing that? Oh yeah. Now, now, oh now it's I now it's Foley. Now we got Strickland. Strickland's still there. So what? The new hope is the president. Who supported the president? It was it was Strickland. So uh, no, I'm not gonna lose. I'm not gonna believe a damn thing until I truly see a a program that is committed 
to winning. And we're not. We're we're commit we're committed to having a reputable program, a nice, you know, finishing round eight to twelve in recruiting. Maybe, you know, depending on who you get, maybe six at but you know, not not at all to have a top, uh, um, you know, per- perennial top five, six recruiting classes. But not at all. Here's the thing that scares me: is it seems to be with the University of Florida when something bad happens, we go the opposite direction. Like we shy away from whatever caused that problem. Urban Myers here, you have all the arrest and things like that, and and it seemed like the effect to the program with that was we stopped playing dirty. We didn't, you know, we, after that, we just steadily declined and we played the safe route and said, you know, we became more of a worried about our public image than we were worried about, you know, how we were perceived and we didn't want to be perceived badly in the media like this. So does that, does that do our boosters or, you know, like you were saying, the UA, you know, and people in that nature, they're like, oh, well, God almighty, we're, we got in trouble here. Maybe we need to shy away from this NIL stuff. It's not a good look for the program. It's going to start. It starts with the head of the snake, yeah. the president, <laughs> period. It's just like, how much does he want to, like, okay, we're at top five public school. Cool, we get it. All right. I understand. All right. I understand it's no longer as fun to party at Florida. All right. I, I've come to terms with that. Luckily, I'm old enough. Now, that being said, Strickland's still there. So it's either going to – we're going to wait for Billy to play his long game in terms of, you know, getting – building a nice rebuild. foundation, which I do have faith in. Or, But I, I don't think true wholesale changes will occur unless he pulls every now and then what Mac did. Put up the administration on blast. And did that – Piss them off and pretty much shut us down for till now. Yeah, but guess what? He still got his practice facility in the summer. Uh, that may be a strategy I like, Mike. Like you're gonna have it's to. It's the only way because it works. And guess what? They're not buying out another freaking coach. Not, not, that not anytime soon. He's got they at least. Not, he is all the leverage in the world. He's got two to three more years easy. No matter, unless unless we go 0 and 10, 0 and 12 next year. They are not and buying his ass out. And just he's, got to a, say, he's got a brand new facility. I'm going to I'm gonna whip. I'm, I'm not. He, he's got all the leverage in the world. But first, you, know, you want to talk president? about You want to say what, uh, since we got on that kind of t- t- subject, Gator Jen kind of said some stuff this week about how things kind of. Uh, if things are going like better as far as the uh, uh, meeting and talking uh, with everybody, I don't know if they you were speak all, on that. They had a meeting, um, I believe it was the 16th. They had a meeting with all the important people, per se, and discussed the changes going forward with the collective, which should be announced shortly. I, I feel like we've been saying this forever. But I feel like the Rashada contract situation slowed that whole thing up due to, uh, you know, um, what I was saying. They had to, they couldn't transfer the contract until it was finalized. You know, it was uh, one way or another. So this goes back to what I was saying to Mike. This could be a monumental moment, one way or the other. And we're and all sitting here saying, you know, but Mike said it. We said this after Rashada went to Miami. Uh, we said it after Cormani went to Miami. Shout out after, to Coach after Prime. Foley, for after just, Foley was gone. Oh, we got a new AD. Yeah. That, um, just, just, sooner or later, our boosters, people of influence, people of importance, have either got to decide, I want just, Florida to be great again, or I'm just cool with us being. Hey, Hirsch. Middle of the road. It's been decided. I don't know if it's been decided. I mean, I, why don't you just come to grips with it? No, I ain't coming to grips with nothing. You'll sleep better tonight. I sleep great, baby. Yeah. I ain't got to be up for work tomorrow. <laughs> ah! All right, guys. We're not going to keep, you know, this story's been beat to death. We know it, and we're late to the party. Um, It's just, it is what it is right now. We can... 
you know, we can all hope that things get better from here on out, but it's a show me right now. Uh, it's always, what have you done for me lately? Mike said that many times, and right now it's it's absolutely nothing. Nothing much being done except for a few things in the portal that we'll get to in a minute. But I guess it's not all bad news. I mean, we can talk about some uh, ratings increases that took place this week on our Friends at Own3. <laughs> Own3 did a rankings adjustment this week. And just just a couple of the highlights I wanted to, to share. Was is, that? It, is, it a, is, is it a coincidence that there was a mass ga- gator exodus? Look, you don't talk about that, all right? That's not why. I don't, I don't care. Or I, I wouldn't, I'm not complaining. They're not doing themselves any favors getting us back by all this Rashada stuff that they're running <laughs> either. But... <laughs> Uh, just a couple of highlights. Hey, on three gave the Gators a five star. Eugene Wilson, number 32 in the country on on three's newest and probably last rankings of the cycle. Hey, get with the program. Every other recruiting site on the, you know, Eugene Wilson, while he may not be a five star player. I'm not saying he is or isn't. We've, we've hit on him all year. You know, if you've listened to the show, He's the prospect I'm most excited about. The kid's going to be phenomenal, I believe, and he's criminally underrated on almost every site. So props to on three for that. You got that one right. Another guy that has just seen a meteoric rise since he signed with Florida or or committed to Florida, Jakeem Jackson, all the way up to number 40 on on three. And, hey, guess what? That makes him the number one DB in the state of Florida, according to OM3, has Cormani and Ricks dropped below him. Ooh, hey, thanks for the bragging rights and some, you know. <laughs> I would say that was a uh, a decent eval. Yeah, Corey Raymond's washed, I heard. You know, hey. Uh, Kelby Collins, another one. We were expecting a huge jump from Kelby Collins. Kelby Collins jumped all the way up to, to uh, on on three. I believe he was number fifty. So, just an absolute great job by those. And Cameron James came in at like fifty-two. I want to say on the on three rankings. You know who wasn't on in the top fifty? Samson Okunlola. What happened to him? He didn't look too good out there, and a little inconsistent. A little inconsistent, but hey, hey real quick, know. um, from that uh, the trio over at uh, Osceola, John Walker, one hundred seven, composite overall, number one hundred eight, Jakeem Jackson, and that's before the rest of the rankings come in. I got a feeling Jakeem's going to be the 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 diamond of that uh, hall over at Osceola. When it's all said and done, I don't even know where LeBlanc's at. He he fell. I yeah, didn't see. I don't even know fading. if he played he any of the All Star games during the season. And What's that? He, didn't, he was fading uh, dur- during the season. Yeah. What you we got? Didn't even, the crazy thing is when, when you talk about that trio, Jakeem Jackson was the one that nobody even. He was like the third guy. We didn't even know about him, and that's uh, and you see how far he's risen. To where when Corey Raymond first started going after him when we, when it was in the block and walking all these other guys that we were going after to see where he came to was 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 crazy and uh, I I love that uh, as a former DB I, I love that kid he played both sides of the ball and so uh, yeah. love what Corey Raymond did with Jakeem Jackson yeah LeBlanc was actually uh, one seventy five so oh. you got it you got a good one. All right, and now also um, moving to the uh, one of the recruiting websites per uh, per twenty four seven, and they're you know since with the one of the sites uh, updating with the after the All American games, Coach Spencer's doing his uh, proved to be a great uh, uh, on the trail this cycle. Five of the top fifty D linemen in the country currently are called call their home at University of Florida. Kelby Collins, number four. D lineman overall at 40th overall. Cameron James, number tw- uh, 20th overall. Or number 20, 170th overall in the country. Will Norman, number one, number 28. D lineman, 
194th overall. TJ Searcy, number 36, D lineman in the country, 256th overall player. And last but certainly not least, in our hearts, Gavin Hill at, at a local out of Gainesville, 44th D lineman in the country, 311th overall. So, you know, once again, a great haul by Coach Spencer. You know, and that's once, you know, not the class we wanted, but in terms of the foundation, hey, trenches, you know, it doesn't get much better than that. Than that. Um, but, you know, you got to go sit when you get the good. You also you have to also have to say the bad. Now, with that being said, why is his name still Coach Spencer? That's two cycles, not one. Just like we got, hey, just like quarterback. Bill has got to take a hit. Two cycles. I love Cam. I love love the transfer. But hey, we're not an FSU. We don't rely on transfers. Two cycles, no nose. Next year, we got to get it done, guys. Yep, got to get got to get a younger guy in the in that room. Somebody but, to develop. No, absolutely. And uh, so, Wes, you know, we did have some uh, in Wes's cycle. We had some visitors this past weekend. Wes, you want to, want to take that? Yeah. Um... Coming up weekend. For this for this coming weekend, uh, we have yep. Chauncey Bowens, Miles Graham, who's already committed, Darius Hayes, uh, Travaris Banks, the cornerback from out of Alabama, and there will of course of course be more mentioned probably for this podcast as uh, air while you listen to it. We are, of course we'll update those on our pages on Twitter and uh on our Facebook page so you guys can keep up with these guys. But Chauncey Boys is running back. Like I said, Miles Graham is a linebacker that's out of, out of Georgia, a legacy kid. Darius Hayes. Uh, I it's love time that. time to get that one closed up, man. Yeah, yeah that's what I was about to say. Uh, Graham has been personally recruiting Hayes himself, so good to have Graham there while Hayes is there. Um, so uh, I, I think Miles Graham will probably be one of the guys that uh, – with Lagway, he might be the leader of the defense as far as recruiting, like how Treon Webb, how we bragged about Treon Webb recruiting. Uh, I think that's that would be Miles Graham as far as the defense is concerned because Lagway is doing this thing on offense too. I see him saying stuff to every kid that's visiting and getting off from Florida. So those two are going to be two great leaders in the class, and I'm hoping that you know they can get a top three class like we all think we should have here at Florida. You know, it's going to back off West off the. Maybe I think the top five is there, but I don't, I don't think we we could say you know given, um, unfortunately given what happened with the I mean what, tell me what you think guys, but I don't think we can even with Lagway and uh, you got Lagway Grant. I don't think we can you know set, act like oh top three or bust. I can say top five or bust. I I, I I'm, I'm not saying a bust. If, I, I think we can get I think we can get the top three. Top five is is to me is the floor. So my ceiling well, is like one there. one factor that has to be considered, and I didn't we didn't even include this is the uh, uh, Rushing's older brother transferred from the program this week, so that is going to make his recruitment a lot harder. Not great, Bob. Not great. Now, of course, you know what his father. Great, What's that? You know what is great? What's that? What state is uh Traveris Banks from? Alabama could stuff him in a locker again, is what you're saying. I, think. I mean, listen, Nicholas. All right, I mean, it's not target acquired yet, but um, we're gonna get one out of there. I mean, Hugh Freeze up there, but it's all right. Yeah. So, and of course, next weekend, guys, we got a huge junior day as contact period starts to to ramp back up. Um, DJ Lagway is gonna be in town doing a little recruiting of his own for this junior day. Don't have names listed yet, but I'm sure it's going to be a big deal, and that'll be something we cover on next week's episode. So make sure you tune in, see who's going to be in town for the following weekend. Time to start jumping on that 24 class, get some names in. I'd really like to see the boys go ahead and shut this Darius Haynes thing down this weekend, get us some good news on the board. It's It's – it's needed. Yes. We need some positives. It's time to, you know, perception is everything. And right now, perception is not high. Not high. So, 
All right, guys, we're going to move on down the road from recruiting. That wraps it up for the week. Hopefully, uh, there'll be a lot more positives to talk about next week, and we can move past some of this this negative publicity. We only got much longer to go before National Signing Day, first weekend, first Wednesday in February. I don't know if we're going to add any more guys this cycle or not. If we hear any names, we'll be sure to let you know. So, guys, we're going to jump on in. It's Portal Mania time, baby. Hey, Portal Harris, Mania. Sure. I'm going to do something I hate. What would you guys, how would you feel about the Twins out of Orlando with linebackers? Two blue chips. Um, I don't foresee it happening because they they're re- they're, the last I heard is they were reevaluating them. Here's my thing with that is I think they want the better of the two and not both. And the room is whether people want to admit it out loud right now. The room has gotten a lot fuller with the additions of Mitchell, Spruock. When we got Deuce, that said a lot. Yeah. And Robinson in the class. So I think you're kind of at a place where, like, you know, is is it – he's not – these 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 are two kids that are not going to play anytime soon. So – and they're too good to be – to come here just, you know, they could go to a smaller school, I'm sure. I know Maryland was a school that was trending for them where they probably could see the, you know, the field faster. I don't know. I really don't know Maryland's linebacker room. It could be better than ours, honestly, but, you know, I just I just don't see it happening right now. I know that I was, like I said, I was told a couple of weeks ago they were reevaluating them, and I haven't heard another word since. So that doesn't sound good. You would think they would have them in by now if they were serious. So, oh, and by and by the way, it's uh, Michael and Andrew Harris. Sorry, guys. Yep. All right, guys. It's Portal Mania time, and as always, Portal Mania is brought to you by our partner, Prize Picks. Not joined on Prize Picks yet? Now's a great time, man. Prize Picks Daily Fantasy, where you just pick the over under on players, and it's playoff time, baby. Playoffs. So a stat this week might be I'm going to make my Jacksonville Jaguar fans So mad right now Over under Trevor going to throw two picks or more this week Could be a real stat line I ain't saying they ain't going to win But I mean they two or, two or more picks Anyway guys you get the idea Go ahead sign up prize picks Use our code Respect 100 And prize picks is going to match your first Deposit up to $100. So if you drive, deposit $50 and you want to let it all ride on Patrick Mahomes throwing for four touchdowns this weekend, you can make a lot of money, man. Go out there and get it done. All right, guys. Port, man, Portal Brink, we got to start with somber news here too, don't we? Jeez. Got to keep it a buck. Man. All right. Been a whirlwind uh, week. <laughs> At a quarterback. Since, At a quarterback. Whirlwind week since last weekend. We talked about like I believe it was like right when we went on the air last week. Walker Howard entered the portal. Same, I believe we. What's that? Yeah, like same. I think thing. it was literally like an hour before we jumped on the pod. Walker Howard hit the portal. Well, Walker Howard's time in the portal has come and gone, as he committed. To Lane Kiffin and Ole Miss this week. Guys, was this a whiff by Billy not getting Walker Howard in lieu of the Jaden Rashada debacle? You want you want to say what else happened in Oxford? I don't care about Spencer Sanders, but you can go ahead and I drop mean it's, that it's damn important. It's not important to me, but <laughs> well, Oklahoma State's uh Pro starting quarterback Spencer Sanders transferred there one year one year of eligibility eligibility and they still have incumbent starter Jackson Dart former USC quarterback who had a solid year so I mean are you saying what you're saying is Lane doesn't have a problem getting quarterbacks in his room I'm not I, I mean that, that's his captain obvious what I'm saying is that's a, that's that that's a whiff that's a whiff a whiff uh, for who huh he's saying it's a whiff for us absolute whiff. So what is what is what does Spencer Sanders have to do with that? 
He's got one year eligibility. So he didn't. Uh, he committed he after Walker. He just come to be a third stringer. Walker Howard ain't touching the field this year. I'm I'm confused. I'm 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 not understanding how you correlate. So instead of let's just say worst case, he's going to come here and compete with Mertz. Come truly compete. Right? Mm-hmm. Would you agree? You would have competed with Mertz. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so now he's committing. He's. I got you. Go ahead, Mike. So now he's. He's not going to beat out Spencer. He's not going to beat out Dart. Okay, that's the first thing. Second mm-hmm. thing is now there's all now he's zero chance because there's another quarterback as well, Sanders. But he, he didn't come, come there under. He didn't pretense. come there. He didn't come there until after Walker committed. So the rumors that's were out that's there. That's the rumors were out there that's before that, though. I mean, the boards, like, if I knew, if I heard smoke, I mean, come on, Walker Howard's there. The bottom line is, Jack Miller's the only other quarterback, really. You know, and that's if you're Walker Howard, you're just looking at Mertz. That's the bottom line. And you, you like, all right, mate, worst case, you know, I'll, you know, sit a year and I'm the starter next year. That wasn't good enough for him. That's a win. And, and let's, and let's and, add in two other factors. One, Billy had a prior relationship with a young man. He was the first coach to offer him a scholarship. Silent commit. Two, we sent Rob Sale to his house. Now, I know some people out there being like, well, we sent the offensive line coach. Why does that matter? Rob Sale has a tremendous relationship with the family. So that's why he went. Now, the reason you send Rob Sale first is you can't send Billy. You, you know, you save that, you gauge the interest, and then you send Billy for a second trip to close it out. Or, you know, you, you obviously have the kid come for a visit. We couldn't even get the kid to come for a visit. Now, there's other factors here that we don't know, obviously. Correct. Was the, were we truly interested in Walker Howard? Deeply interested. Because just sending Rob Sale to me kind of is like, eh, you know, because I would think if you're truly interested, you send the posse or you send at least two or three out there to, try to gauge to try to get that visit. Two, did Walker Howard want to come to Florida? Did he want to come to Florida last cycle? The two schools – and the only That's reason nothing. I ask this is the two schools he visited was TCU and Ole Miss, not very far from home. He went to TCU with no coordinator. Last cycle, he was willing to come to University of Florida. What changed? I don't know. Because he no. didn't want to originally go to LSU at all. I think he kind of felt – That's what I'm saying. He was, he was silent to Florida. Well, we have the same staff. There's rumors out there that – I know it was posted on 247, of course – that the Howards kind of got butt hurt when they first called the gauge interest that we told them we weren't really interested at first because of the Rashada situation. I don't truly believe that. I don't put a lot of stock in that. First off, if Billy's nearly as calculated as everyone makes him out to be, you don't give, you don't say, nah, we're good here. That just doesn't seem... (laughs) I mean, listen, Bill, at this point, we can't, and I like Billy Napier, okay? But he's not perfect, all right? And I think he can improve on some of his mishaps, but he has had mishaps. Absolutely. And so, and it, it, a couple of them have, have repeated themselves. So we can't act like he's perfect here, okay? And I, and I would say his biggest mishaps are his handling of the portal. That, that would be my – I mean, looking back a calendar year, going in to Don't get see, me started on the interview. What's that? The, uh, that interview still pisses me off. <laughs> I just feel like if we'd have hit on some people bigger last cycle, the season could have been – you know, we could have even had a better season than we had. He essentially said we were going to. We're going to go portal. Yeah, I, talent acquisition business. Isn't that what you said? People, people love the rant last week. Kudos to all of y'all that gave us a shout out about Mike's rant. We appreciate it. You know, Mike keeps it real. No, but the bottom line is, you had a kid once again. He was willing to come to University of Florida last year. Same staff. What's what's the problem? TCU gets a visit. We don't. We're going to visit. If he goes to Lane, fine. It is what it is. I get it. Kind of. But now it's three kids, three, three people in the room. It's pathetic. 
that you can't even get a visit? That's I think sad. is that. I think he would have been a great bridge. That'd be phenomenal. Lag, what I just, it's, it's, I spoke about that. It's good news. What's that, Wes? I'm disappointed. I spoke about that last week. Given if Rashada was here or not, I still, same thing when I talk about Samson, I wanted Caden Jones. I still wanted Caden Jones. I still wanted Walker Hire regardless because to me, he could, he could have played this year. He already had the one year in the SEC environment, LSU, no athletes that they have over there. Um, uh, say what we want to say about uh, the coach over there. He's a, a good football coach uh, as, as they went to the SEC West Championship game this year. Um, the SEC, they won the SEC West, so he, he got good coaching over there. Um, I would have loved to have him in our room. And we to, to bridge the lag way, I don't know. It's hard to say a whiff when he doesn't even visit, but I get what you I get you guys' point of he should we should have maybe got a visit. But if he's already made his mind up, like to Hersh's point, if the rumor is true, Hey, uh, we didn't we didn't have any interest because we were dealing with Rashada, which would have been dumb. And he said, "Well, I either I'm going to Ole Miss or TCU because it's closer to home." Then there's nothing you can do about that. Um, we missed on him last year. Wish we had got him last year. We had got him last year. All this is nothing, boy. We did nothing nothing to talk about here. But uh, yeah, I, I find that, there, I just, like, I'm just disappointed. Okay. Yeah, no, like, I'm, just I'm just there. disappointed. We're not sending the coach for no reason. Yeah. I'm oh no, just, you don't send you don't you don't send the plane unless you have interest. I mean, it's just not something you do. We're not just gonna burn fossil fuels and, and piss off Greta. <laughs> no, baby. No. I don't I can't I can't uh I can't, you know, say if the report about the the Howards had a gas stove is true or not, and that's why we backed off. <laughs> Dad joke of the week, folks. Oh my goodness. All right. You know, if but if I'm Billy and Company, I was serious. I probably would be placing a phone call today after uh, Sanders committed and say, "Hey, you signed that LOI yet? Yeah, it's still time." Is he on their uh, roster? That's what I'm saying. If if he hasn't before. signed yet, he can change his mind. Now I'm not expecting that to happen, but hey, I'd make the phone call. Did you know <laughs> that Spencer Sanders was going to commit there as well? I mean, it it I'd have to have the conversation. I get to say what we have to call it ASAP. All right. Let's uh, move on down here. We're going to talk about – we got a portal edition earlier in the week, and we're going to talk about him in just a second. But we had some news that broke early this morning, and we wanted to cover that first. Kenyatta Goodwin, former offensive lineman from the University of Kentucky, is going to take a visit to the University of Florida this week. Goodwin is a former top 40 composite recruit. Absolute monster offensive tackle. I mean, an absolute monster. Six foot eight, 350 pounds. And some say bigger. I hope, I hope, some, I hope he's 350. Some people, some say he may have hit uh, Watson weight at one point or another. <laughs> I mean, yeah, him and Watson need to go in a sumo ring. Uh, this is, you know, this is all per, per a source at. Louisville sports, you know, in 247, who is Louisville being the other school that has interest and in, in Goodwin is interested in. So it's really a – looks like a two-team race right now. Guys, what you think about, about the possibility of adding this behemoth to the offensive line? We said we wanted two – we wanted two tackles. You know, Mike Mike really hit on this last last week. We needed to dang some tackles. Um, sounds well, like they first, heard. Um, I wouldn't like just like you know, shoo away Louisville. He's already committed because he, he committed to Kentucky, he was uh top you know, number 33 prospect overall, like you know, as you're alluding to pre- previously. So, and he's um, uh, still in Kentucky and he's an Indiana native, so he obviously likes the, that region. So, but if we can pull him, uh, as if you're good enough. For, for the trenches in, at Kentucky, you're good enough for me because <laughs> they know how to evaluate. Um, I know he has some maturity issues, definitely needs to get um, uh, get his weight down, but I like what our staff did with Watson. So just got to make sure we get his work ethic in check. In the day right now, we need bodies. He has the talent. Um, I like how our staff can develop. I know he um, likes that in our staff as well with our number of coaches. 
that can high, um, that be high beneficial for him in, in, the, uh, um, in the day as well. The players, they like to stay within the SEC, especially linemen. So, and I think it'll be a phenomenal get. It'll take care of, you know, uh, the miss, he, misses throughout, you know, this cycle. It'll help the room, help the numbers out. And once again, he's not just a high school kid. He is uh, somewhat proven. Yeah, I'll take him over John Campbell all day and twice on Sunday. Yeah. Wes, uh, you got anything you want to drop in there? Yeah, 6'8 kids. They love these 6'8 kids. Uh, I love them too. Big guys, uh, like you might uh, allude to, uh, played in the SEC already, uh, played in the FC environment over there with Coach Stoops. So you got to love that uh, playing in the SEC. Um, and we need bodies. We need depth uh, along our offensive line, and he uh, will be a great addition to – that uh whether he, he starts or if he's too deep so um we'd love to get him on campus get him in the shape uh and let the two coaches that we have working off his line uh do their thing um, i still would like to have some true uh elite offensive line talent come in throughout the recruiting process but i'm not gonna be mad by getting uh and then at the same time you're getting a guy and you're hurting kentucky at the same time because they're still trying to if they're still trying to hold on them on to him then he's a good kid. So uh, uh, the fact that they're trying to keep him or have him come back uh, speaks to the caliber of kid that the, the potential he may have. And let's not let this slide, guys. I mean, Kentucky usually has really solid offensive lines year in, year out. So any kid that they cho- they picked, you know, picked up to go on that offensive line, I think is is probably pretty solid. Weight, obviously, is an issue. Need to get that under control. But, hey, that's why we have an army of, you know, nutritionalists and guys creating plans for these kids. You know, it's it's that's that's part of it. And, you know, all the way down to the – they're monitoring these kids sleep at night. Every one of these kids has a sleep app that shows when they get up to grab a snack at night and stuff like that. You know, so they're they're – they're putting these kids in a position to succeed health wise and things of that nature to try to get them better. You know, at that point, it just becomes up to the kid to, you know, have the commitment, you know, and we've seen you know what happens. You don't get better. You get damn worse. <laughs> hey, here's the main thing from that though, between beside the size and everything. Pause three years of eligibility. Yes, three years of eligibility was actually going to be my next point, and that's fantastic because you can develop him if he's if he's not quite ready this year. Say say you like uh, our next guy we're going to talk about. Our weight's better in the in the short term, you know. Or he does like Barber. He starts the year and he works himself into the rotation and becomes a beast. I mean, you know, it 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 happens different ways for different kids all the all the time. You got to see what the spark is. But let's get him on campus this weekend, see how it goes, and hopefully we're giving y'all some good news. You know, we're talking about good news next week like we're about to with Damian George, who visited last weekend. Damian George, former offensive lineman at the University of Alabama, 6'6", 333-pound. One more of these behemoth probably plays as a tackle, but maybe some interior. I mean, that. This offensive line likes to move these kids around depending on where they need them. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what you can't, you know, diminish in this is that he has starting experience in the SEC for Alabama. Uh, that alone tells you the kids played in meaningful games. You know, he's played within a, a system that, you know, a lot is expected of those kids. They don't mess around. We know that. He's a professional. Yes. He's a professional. He brings, he his, lunch pail. He, he brings his lunch pail and his hard hat to work. Yeah. 18, 19-year-old, <laughs> starting starting to Bama. I don't care for how many games. You, yeah. you, can't, you, 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 you came to play. He started. Yeah, he played in 2021. He played in 12 games with Alabama, made three starts, and had a PFF grade of 65.0, which is obviously a very respectable grade. It's not Osiris Torrance grade, but there are very few guys that are. I believe Torrance grades graded in the 80s. 
and he's and he's young as well. Young, yes, he's, he's very he's young. Super young. This is another guy that will have multiple years on campus to be developed by what we perceive as a great developing system for off, you know, for offensive linemen. Mike, thoughts? I love it. Um, once again, that, that size profile has SEC experience. So, in the, if I, what I would say is if you're a big time O lineman, nine out of 10 times, I expect you to look, look to play in the SEC, especially if you're down from this area, Texas over to, you know, and to the Southeast, because, you know, that's, it's a dog eat dog world. That's where the, you know, iron, char iron sharpens iron. It's where the NFL goes to, you know, get their best players. So, you know, they, the previous two guys, had that mentality as well, but he also has the ability to slide inside as well. So it goes once again provides options for us, not only on a two deep, but amongst the line. Wes, any thoughts about George? I speak to the offensive line in general. I, if we can get one of both of these guys, I was really, really, really wor worried about the offensive line. I know we pied uh, maybe three weeks ago about the offensive line in general. Like, who are we going to have here? Where's the depth at? We got to really hit this portal and get some guys in here. If you get two SEC caliber guys or one of these SEC caliber guys to put in that one and two deep, that to me is goes a long way. Especially when we got Etienne and Montreal Johnson, we're gonna need to be to have some guys ready to push some guys around and and, and to run the ball to make life easier for for Merce. I, that that was my thing uh, with him. I was like, is he gonna? I mean. Is he going to be back there running for his life and he can't move? So you really want to have good guys on the O-line uh, for a quarterback that is not the, the, the quarterbacks we kind of see now that can be able to move and stuff. Uh, he's more of the pocket passer type of quarterback. So we, we want our offensive line to be strong. And then we have two great backs behind him. So we want to be able to run the ball first and do play action off that. And it starts up front, uh, especially in the SEC. SEC is all about the trenches. And if you can't protect – uh, there's no good. There's no reason to have two running backs or a quarterback that can throw the ball if they're on their back and they get hit in the backfield. As good as our running backs are with contact, because I believe Montreal and Etienne are good uh, after first contact, I still don't want to be seeing seeing them hit in the backfield. All right, guys, I want to po pose pose a question to you both. After if if Goodwin commits, let's say even if Goodwin doesn't commit. Billy's promise going into year one was he wanted to rebuild the trenches. Between the class and the transfer portal with the additions already of George, Mazuka, Banks, Watts, uh, Watts, is it? Waits? Wait, no, not, well, Waits is one. I'm thinking of the nose tackle. Jackson. Too many, Jackson, thank you. Too many kids to remember at once. Have they rebuilt these trenches to your liking? No. Okay. I mean, that man didn't even it, have to it, think. It can be good. They've done a good, a respectable job. But it, once again, what you, this goes to what we were saying throughout the season with, like, I'm saying Anthony Richardson, who's having respectable numbers, respectable games. Like the Tennessee game was amazing, but like then have an off game. It just goes to what? What is your? What is the Gator standard to you? People say it all the time. I know what I expect from the program because I know when it's full go, what we can. I'm expecting top three to five classes annually. Yep. Let me let me ask you, let me pose this to you then. Can they change your mind with their play on the field this season? I mean, of course. I mean, okay. It, you know, that, I mean, that's and I mean, because I'm saying you're you're also depending on a lot of transfers to plug important needs here. So that's right. Yeah. No, yeah, when I got when we got George, I was like, I said, oh, cool, we got Plan F. <laughs> I'm serious though. I mean, because you can roll your eyes, Wes. What's so my, my question? When, 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 when you, my question who, who my, okay, my, my, my question. My, the reason why I roll my eyes, my question is a few moments ago, just for you and hers. You, you guys said that you wanted him to hit the portal. So if you hit the portal and you up? hit these. And you get these two SEC guys for the offensive line. Say you get both of them, Kentucky and Alabama. And you get these two guys who played SEC ball 
from two programs that you love from trenches. How is that not solidifying? Are you getting Goodwin team? right now? If you are you contacting Goodwin if you have Samson, yes or no? But that's not the question. Yeah, I just made the question. But here's I'll, I'll argue this though. Are you counting on Samson to start next year? I think he would have been plugged into it too. Well, we just said he's very been very inconsistent just in All Star games. I understand. I, once again, I understand that, but and they maybe would have, you know, had a guy uh, George for, for example to ease him in. But what I'm saying is you, you, we're going we're going to backup options at this point. I can still be happy with it, with what they're getting, but at the end of the day, why Goodwin is not performing as a top forty kid right now, or top fifty kid. He's not. That's why he's transferring. So, let me ask you. starting pick, arguably day one. To piggyback off, to piggyback off what Hurst said, which side of the trenches are you guys more worried about then? O line. I'm, I'm, I'm more. Not, I'd agree with that. I agree no with that right tackle. now. I have no, I have blo- no blue chip tackles. Simmons, whiff. Okay, Atkins a good, good recruiter, and oh, we got Kearney. I got a guard. Who's my center? I have one. I have one guard. Oh, you preach to the choir, so I'm good. No, so, no. <laughs> I'm good. No, and I and so like that's what I'm saying. I'll, I'll, at the, in the cycle, I was willing to eat, truly evaluate it, and <laughs> I don't. I need my six six guys to skin the ankles, man. I don't have them. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha, man. All right, all right. <laughs> Bottom hey, line, though. Hey, we're and we're all and entitled should, to that opinion. And, and like I said, that's why I shifted it also to could they change your mind on the field? <laughs> because right now it may not be impressive to anyone's like to our average viewer or listener. They may be like, they may totally agree with Mike. They may hear that and be like, no, I'm not impressed with it at all. We're taking guys that are transferring. And a lot of people's mindsets about transfers are they weren't good enough to hack it at their first school. This this is the confusing part about it though, because last year, I mean, y'all y'all just made the comment and just just conversation that he was supposed to hit the portal last year, but if he if he's hitting it now, it's still an issue. The, no, that was no, you're that, talking no, about two no, different no, things though, no, because last no. year he come in guns blazing saying we're gonna we're gonna acquire talent, and then he went out and got like three guys, and two of them he knew. And hold on, at the same time we. We pretty much discarded the whole class. His whole opening first class pretty much discarded everything, which is fine. I understand why. He asked very little of certain kids, uh, like the receiver that went to it was J.D. Gibson or something. He, he put a test out there for the kids, and they it, failed. Very simple, okay? And and I, he got his guys. All right, it's fine. You want to get your guys small class? Cool. Kill the portal. He said he was. He didn't. Strike and, one. And to, to, so, to, to, to that point. I, I, I don't mean to cut you off, but I agree with you. I, I, we didn't have the scholarship. I think he should have sent some people. We had a mass exodus this uh, this winter. He should have did that during the summer. He should have has told some guys. Well, at the there's a reason ball. he didn't. He how wanted to know you, who was, he wanted to know who he had and who was bought in. Yeah, and, I, so, and, also, and go, so he can't hit the portal then. Hold on. How do we hit the portal if we had 85 scholarships? How can he do it during the summer? Like, with the, you still need kids. That's like, that's what I'm saying. You can't maybe, hit the portal. Maybe, no, you have to do that before spring. You can't do that in the summer. You're not gonna have bodies. It's you, it's, you, it's a delicate time frame because you want you, you have install. Sorry, Hirsch. No, you're good. It's just it, it's a delicate time frame. And look, this is why Billy gets paid millions, and we're on a podcast talking out our ass. Did, All he, right? not, did he not see our numbers though? He obviously he didn't. <laughs> Shit. Look, but speaking of that first trans- transfer portal class, big news this week broke t- last Saturday. Ricky Persall is returning for his last year, uh, bypassed the draft. I know some people will probably say, well, he wasn't going to get picked high anyway. But, you know, he had gotten pretty good feedback. I don't think we spoke about this before. Ricky's not one of those that's probably going to skyrocket up any charts and be a first or second round pick, no matter what happens next year. But him returning to this offense, I believe most people will agree is huge. Uh, word is 
he's had some throwing sessions with uh, Graham Mertz, and he liked what he saw. Did you know what you know what route they did? It's, uh, probably a slant, sure. and he hit him. Eight yard sure. slant, hit him in the hands. Slant, slant, baby. Couple comebacks. Maybe, maybe, hey, maybe hey. an eight. An eight yard out that didn't sky over his head hey, and hit a cheerleader. He a couple difficult, you know, comebacks, <laughs> right? But he, we didn't, only a couple. We didn't want to make it too difficult there. Word on the streets is Graham, it's Ricky got done with the throwing session, and oh. neither one of his hands were broken from catching an eight yard curl. So he was like, "I like this guy." <laughs> I like it. I, I like it, of course, because he's a he's he's a good player for us. But I also like it because I see Eugene Wilson. Uh, eventually taking that spot next year, and Ricky can run whoa, some whoa, whoa. What? Eugene Wilson taking over the spot next year or after? He means the year prior after when he leaves the following year. Yeah, yeah. Okay. and so miswording, but yeah. he can also spell Ricky on plays, and we also know Ricky may not be guaranteed to play all twelve games of the year. He, you know, he got beat yeah. up a couple of times last year, and Ricky Ricky runs routes well. And to have a guy in front of you that runs routes the way, uh, not only do you have have Mike's boy KC coaching you, but you have a veteran guy in front of you that's a professional. And I I love having guys that's still there behind uh, that you can learn from. So uh, glad that Rick is coming back for the room of the young, the three young receivers that we have coming in that they can. I I don't think Coach Colbert's effect in all this can be understated at all. Yeah. Uh, I know that's Mike's dude. Yeah, that's why I shot him. <laughs> Mike is squarely in the KC camp. Trying to tell his people. Uh, his receivers shined all year in the NFL. Yeah. I think he's developing kids really good. So, guys, with that being said, what what are our starters next year? What do you think that that room looks like starting game one and out there in Utah? Receivers. We talking yep. whole team or receiver receivers? No, just the starting receivers. Ricky, because that's going to lead to the next question. <laughs> Ricky, I, I mean, I, I'm going with Ricky. I don't see. I, I think he's going to start game one. I, regardless of, of how fans and how we may feel about him, it's going to be Ricky Henderson. And um, right now, I go with Caleb Douglas. I agree with you on Caleb Douglas. I think he starts next year, Mike. There's John Reynolds. That's not on the team anymore. He's gonna play. Oh, I got to mix up Frazier's. My bad. <laughs> no, I just googled it too to make sure it was a Frazier's in. I got Frazier's. My bad. I, I like Frazier's. I think I think Frazier's will battle. But I got Frazier's over Henderson. I got Caleb Douglas and I got Pier- Pierce. I got them mixed up. I like I like that three. I kind of agree with you, but we all know that Henderson's gonna get his reps too. It's just gonna happen. Look, the staff has faith in him, and your boy KC clearly has faith in him. He's mar- he he keeps you know marching him out there. I'll have a conversation with him. I have to look back, and I'm glad we have this conversation. Remember how I told you guys like how we were they weren't replacing guys. I don't know if Frazier's and, and and that might be to Mike's point. I think Frazier's and Henderson are in the same are playing that Y. Z. I Z. just here here's my thing. It's actually I just don't want to see. I just don't want to see Hendo catching that screen anymore. I don't care what else happens. I just don't want to see him catch that screen anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Give me, me somebody either. with I a wiggle. Yeah, like yeah, look out for time. I want that play scrap. I want the whole play scrap. Even if he the caught play it. Can it. Work. The Sometimes play can he work. Sometimes he was making stuff he was doing on his own. Darius Tony has shown the bubble screen can be effective, but you need Darius somebody with Tony wiggle. is not a human being, so let's. <laughs> he has no needs. He has no All right, so that brings to the last question here before we move on, guys. Do we need a transfer for the wide receiver room? There's a lot of debate, whether it be on the Gator Plus Discord. Uh, Shout out to Dave and the Gator Breakdown Plus Discord and uh, message boards and wherever you might frequent. Does the wide receiver room need a transfer? And is there room for one? Mike? Yes, they need one. I don't think they'll take one due to the the amount of people in the room, and we're gonna, you know, they're gonna be running a lot of two tight end sets. So, Wes, what are your thoughts? Um, I don't want to take a guy just for the sake of taking a guy. We have some 
just a guy. We have some Jags that are on the roster now. Um, oh, took Mike's word. <laughs> so, I, I, brother, cite your sources. MLA <laughs> style or something. Jesus. I would prefer if it's if it's an elite guy. Somebody, if it's a true X type receiver, then you take him. But if it's no true X's or somebody that uh, can stretch the defense, like kind of shorter was that guy for us last year. If we have, don't have a guy that can run a four three four four guy that can get down the field, then no. We already have an X, and he catches all the screen passes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. It's always food for thought. A lot of time for things for decisions to be made, but the hard cap on transfers enrolling to be eligible for spring is the 23rd. So this weekend is probably going to be – all she wrote for early entry, early enrollment transfers that can be playing in spring ball. So I wouldn't expect us to add probably more than one more guy. I'm sure somebody could show up as a surprise this weekend. Obviously, we still need a third running back. Thought we had one on the hook with uh, Asa Martin, but it looks like he's going to head on down to over to Troy where he can possibly start as opposed to being the third back on this roster, which I can respect. It it is what it is. Mullen should have probably taken Asa out of high school anyway, but that's a discussion for another time. So with that being said, guys, it's time for the pod of the people. We do it every week, but we want to make an announcement about pod of the people before we get started. Starting next week, pod of the people is going to be a YouTube exclusive video content. So, if you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, be a really good time to jump on board and be able to check this episode out every week. It's going to probably range from 15 to 25 minutes, depending on the questions and how long it takes us long-winded folks to answer those questions. But that is our plan, is we want to make it a completely separate episode for y'all to tune into, hear your questions. That gives us more time to also answer more of your questions, and we'll be posting those questions starting on the weekend for y'all to, to give us your questions. I'm sorry to poke making a post asking for your questions so that you can get them in there. We can look over them, pick out the best eight, 10, 12 questions, and then we'll read them off, man. We love hearing what you guys ask. Wes, you got something to add? Yeah. Just to let them know the, uh, another reason why we do this, because we plan to have some interviews here in the upcoming weeks. And we want that to be totally separate because the interview Absolutely. might be hour and, and some change long and we don't want to have those we're doing uh podcast so that way you can have the pod questions uh separate that from the fans and then you can have you guys who just focus, focus on those things so interview yes. season baby interview season all right Wes fire out these questions all right give me a moment let me pull them up you uh you want to do the Facebook or the Twitter ones first here I'll do the Twitter ones first all right Mike, no, I'm gonna ask this to Wes first because Wes is the 24 man. Wes, our boy Lucas the Gator man, ask you in your mind who could be the next 24 commitment. <laughs> we we kind of got that question twice. I got that one on the Facebook as well. I think we talked about it early in the podcast. Uh, hopefully, we can get Hayes locked down this weekend. Uh, I wanted if I had a prefer because I feel like we kind of got Hayes there, but. <sighs> To Mike's point about having, we talked, I think, off air about having just faith and just trusting in things. I, I'm not sure about anything about recruiting in Florida until we actually get the guys in there. Even though I have a lot of hope for this 24 class, I'm, I'm going with Hayes or hopefully rushing as my you two guys. The H word? Say that again. You said the yeah, H word? Hope. No one oh. West been hyping this 24 class oh, since, he, oh, since man. he knew the names. All right, next questions. This is from our man Donut Burger on Twitter. Donut Burger asked his question last week, and he's back again. In y'all's opinion, <laughs> is this the worst QB room we've had in the last 30 years? That's his first question. Mike? <laughs> Look at the pain on the man's face. No. No, yet. I don't yes. believe it is either. Yes, it is. The other one would have been um, Del Rio Applebee's Iyer. That was all one room, right? Yeah, you had Franks and Trask in that room too. 
They were freshmen. That they were in the room as well. Mm-hmm. It's got to be worse then. <laughs> Thanks, brother. Thanks, brother. That, that's Apple, the, that's that when Applebee was. was it? When was Applebee here? Applebee, because uh, Applebee won us the. Applebee was the LSU game that we beat them on the. We stopped them on the goal line. Where Tyree Cleveland had the long 80, 80 90 yard pass. I was going to say yes, uh, because, you know, we have Jack. Right now, there's only three people in the room. That's what I'm saying. So, you know, <laughs> we, we got a baseball player. We have a guy that's um, always good for is a pregame walk up. And, uh, and he's from Arizona. Arizona. And we have Graham. Yeah, we, we have, yeah. Our three quarterbacks are from o- Oklahoma. I'll give them, a, I'll give that state a pass. But listen, I, I, besides Tulsa King, they're good for nothing. Now, you got the state. You got a quarterback from the state of Arizona, and God bless him. But in the last, we got a quarterback from the state of Kansas. So that's what I have to freaking work with. And um, yeah, thirty years. Let's make it for shit to get. Let's make it forty years. I... Donut Burger's second part of this question was also how much will this negative news shot hurt us in the future? Uh, Donut. We really tried to break that down in the opening segment. Hopefully you got enough out of that, you know, to answer your question. One more question from Twitter. Trey Simpson asked us, what position is the most needed in the 24 class? Well, I'll take that one right off the bat. Quarterback right now, because as we just discussed, that room is trash. (laughs) You want to do a follow-up since we right now have one in, in tow? But technically, yes. Yeah. So, what would you say is the, is the most important room in terms of impacts? You got to say tackle. I mean, we don't know. So, no tackle. I'm gonna say safety. Oh, yeah. Because we've had one true blooded safety in Jordan Castell. I, I mean, that safety count. room safety room is scaring me right now. <laughs> and we just let Hayward go to Georgia. So, you know. Yeah. I'm, I'm truly worried about the safety position. But another day. Wes, what you got for us from the world of Facebook? Um, This one, first one goes to you, Hirsch. Uh, this is from Charlie Sapp. Uh, with the players we have committed, how many scholarships do we have left, and what are our needs? Kind of answer the second part of it. I believe, from what I've been told, and kind of, I believe we're at somewhere from five to six left. Yeah, I've heard six or seven. So I think Rashada up that to six to seven. That was that was where I was going to go with that. I believe that with Rashada off the books, that probably takes us to six to seven. Obviously, they're looking for another offensive lineman. Obviously, we need another running back. Clearly, we need another quarterback. So that's that's three right there. Uh, I would say we need a safety, but what do I know? I'm just a fan on, you know, a podcast. <laughs> uh, and then that leaves you open, obviously, for a couple of spots. If you could, maybe if you could get another linebacker. I don't. They're looking at the twins, so obviously they're looking possibly at another linebacker. I mean. That's just what that tells you. Possible departure of Scooby if he loses his job. Yeah, and you kind of got to keep your hand kind of loose there as spring happens and you have some more departures. So, Which is where we got Ricky. Yeah, so I I would say anywhere from five to seven right now is probably the number. All right, Mike from Bo Dawes. Shout out Bo. He asks questions every week or every other week. How do we go forward with NIL deals so that we don't have this – Fiasco again. <laughs> Simple. <laughs> Checks and balances. That's it. Yeah. Um, Everyone's got to know what the other one is doing. Checks and balances or just commu- uh, communications. Communication. Communication. communication, which, you know, at the same time, just better have a system, better system of checks and balances. Yeah. And then this to, and this is to piggyback on this question. Does this have anything to do with Billy Mike? Does hmm? Billy Napier, do is this is Billy Napier at fault as far as this process is? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, we, he, we he that shares time. a responsibility. I wouldn't. I, I think in in fault makes it sound like he's the soul to bear, but I think he's he's equally as responsible as anyone in it. Yeah. Okay. You, I mean, yeah, him him and Scott Strickland. 
because right. the head coach should know what is going on in all facets of his program. Especially QB1. Gotcha. All right. Uh, this is from Jared White. Uh, he said, Billy said after signing day, 18 of the 20 signees will be enrolling early. I knew Wilson was not. You already know about Rashad. So is Dijon or Hill that changed their mind? Do we have any concerns there too? I believe they said Dijon would not be enrolling early, and that might just be an eligibility. Oh, like he just may not be eligible to. Mm-hmm. I believe that's what I read, though, is that Dijon is not currently able to enroll early. So I, it's nothing to be concerned about. He probably just has some schoolwork to do. Yeah, I wouldn't. Have, I wouldn't worry about like, especially you know, with the army there that uh, the you know kids aren't getting in with academics. All right, Mike. Or lack thereof. All right, Mike. Uh, this is from Gary Taft. He said, "How come our fans are so impatient? We all knew that there were many problems with our program, and that it takes time to change for changes for the better." And if Rashada gets $13 million to play college football, go for him. But I'm glad it's not from the Gators. Go Gators, chomp, chomp. The first part of his question is why are our fans so impatient when they know that our program has had so many issues and things that had to be, as far as the infrastructure of the program, that had to be retooled. Like we talked about last year when Billy first came on about how he had to reestablish his relationship with high school quarterbacks. I'm just giving you a whole bigger picture of things that I know had. why they're impatient because there's – simple. The negatives outweigh the positives right now. What have you done for me lately? Um, it goes back to, again, the Gator standard. Spurrier to Zook was screwing his ass off. He didn't win. Get Urban Meyer, he wins. So everyone knows when this program is run correctly, what can be done. It's not hard to win at the University of Florida. Be competent. We haven't been competent in over a decade. So if Billy, we, we, we lost a lot of close games. Well, all he pretty much asked for was win the ones we should have, but he kind of got a pass on that. However, if you would have got finished top seven recruiting, you know, he would have been fine. Sign Rashada. Okay, fine. And maybe like get Kamar, um, get, you know, get De- Ricks or even like a John Walker. Cool. For- Smooth sailing. Guess too what many, didn't happen? Too many L's starting on the field and then followed over to recruiting in a row. It's Correct. Been nothing since. Since Vanderbilt, it's been one L after another, and they far outweigh the W's. And you can't – I mean, you just can't yeah. – Especially when it. FSU, for example, you should be – should easily – no, you should have beat FSU, and you 100% should have beat um, Vanderbilt. And then you had the bowl game, so you have three losses, and then we lost in recruiting. And yeah. then you follow it all up with this Rashada incident, the which – which, whether yes. whatever is true and what is not true, whatever, it makes us look on the surface as completely incompetent. Yeah. Like, Mike, this, Mike said this, and it hurts you, you, I had to go to an eyes close it this way. The cornfield games are the cornfield games, but certain battles, and I'll give a recruiting battle, and I'll give a game. Vanderbilt, you have to win. John Walker, you have to win. Case closed. Those Absolutely. other things. Ricks, Bama, he went to Bama. Okay, that's Bama. Florida State, they had a decent year. We should have won coin flip game. Not big, not mad at it because it's a coin flip game it's year one. You got to beat Vanderbilt. You got to get John Walker. But you, have to, at those two. but you also have to sit there and say FSU was the last rival game after you lost to every other rival in the season. So that's- your mindset is you lose that game, coin flip or not, you lost to every rival in the season. Yeah, I was just how had that bowl game look we, disinterested and and how it and here's the thing whether you're being smart about it or not it looked horrible and that's all you take away from it is thirty to three that's all you see yeah. and then you ask yourself why did you even go because you didn't get the full amount of practices and it hurt in recruiting that last weekend I believe too. We didn't it get absolutely a chance to did, last but you know they're not going we to let us say no to going. So it. Just, I mean, I yeah. don't think it. Honestly, I don't think it made a big. I don't think it dented anything. I think. Yeah. I think that some guys coming that last weekend is important. Just like the, the same we were saying about, 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 about money. Money. It wasn't relationships. Came down to money. Yeah, at, in the NIL era, a lot of that's kind of hit or miss. I mean, you talk about you talk about walk. Well, you know, you talk about ha- not Howard. Um. Walker, 
I mean, the kid visited five times and you still couldn't close that deal out. So, I mean, I'm not putting my eggs in the basket week, of getting the last visit with Samson wouldn't change anything. Ricks, we wouldn't change anything. Walker didn't change anything. So, I mean, like, who are we going to get? Next question. This is another from Charles Sapp. Uh, to you, Hirsch, any truth to the rumor of Lagway that he might reclassify? There is noise out there. I don't really put any stock into that noise right yeah, now. I'll comment on that smoke. Uh, it could be just fan, you know, generated. Oh, well, we don't have anybody. I wish we could get DJ to re reclassify. I, I need to hear something from a verified source before I put any, you know, stock into that. All right, Mike. <clears throat> Where do we pivot to now for quarterback now that Rashad is gone and Howard is committed to Ole Miss? What are your thoughts on Jake Garcia? No. <laughs> no. Oh, I know where this is going, baby. <laughs> That's why I say that with Mike. <laughs> Jake Garcia is awful. Don't go with Garcia, Mike. Jake Garcia is awful. <laughs> Football is final um, commits. Uh, a lot of people didn't want to look, take that. They just look at his ranking, but his final offers were going to Arkansas, FSU, and Miami. But this was before Pittman, you know, proved that he could, you know, do his thing. So he had a horrible final offer list. He proved to be a horrible quarterback. Ja'Cory Brown's a better quarterback than him. Ja'Cory Brown shouldn't be playing football until year three to four. So he, he no, Jake Garcia is not a power five starting quarterback. All right. So got your answer there. I saved that one for Mike. God, no. Really <laughs> Jesus Christ! And to, to to let you guys know, they don't know the questions I'm going to ask them, so they're just this is top of the top of the dope. For them. I knew as soon as I heard it where that one was going. <laughs> I'm surprised. All right, um, I think I'm surprised right. they know after I heard it. Gar, this is from Kyle McCullough Hurst. Uh, why do Florida fans? Well, excuse me. Why do why did Florida fire a winning coach for who couldn't recruit for a losing coach? <laughs> Uh, who who coached six and seven record that also can't recruit? Okay, first off, Dan, let's let's start at the very. Let's go back in time. Dan Mullen not being able to recruit was one thing. Dan Mullen lost this team in a way that almost I have never seen before. Uh, you had. Players being able to do whatever they want, openly smoke weed and other things in the locker room, in the team hotel. He was openly searching for other jobs. Dan Mullen lost this job. We didn't fire Dan Mullen. Dan Mullen, Dan Mullen quit. basically pissed his way out of the town. Quit. Yeah, and burned down the fucking building on his way out. I understand the frustrations right now with Billy Napier. I share in those frustrations, but I believe still to this day he's the man for the job. He needs to change. He needs to change some things, absolutely. But the but he recruits better. I'm sorry. He recruits better than Dan Mullen, and the numbers prove that. I just you know it. It was never going to be a one-year fix, and anyone that thinks otherwise just needs to relax for a minute, touch some grass, whatever have you, whatever your go-to phrase is there. It's Next year is going to be the year. I mean, we're going to have to watch and see what the, what the growth is. I saw Hurst talking to somebody about this today. If you look at what might have been Dan Mullen's best recruiting class, which was 19 uh, class, and compared to this class, that class uh, had Kyrie Elam in it. Look at that class oh, the, and see. The Elam and Friends class. No. Yeah, you call it the Elam and Friends class. Um, and uh, and I see Kyle that you were talking with uh, somebody else in the uh, in the group. You were talking to Ryan and Ryan said we kind of answered that question last week. Look at Dan Mullins. Go to two four seven. Uh, look up Dan Mullins twenty nineteen class and see that class compared to the class we have this year, just from top to bottom overall. See where those guys are at and compare it. And you have you that was Dan Mullen's supposedly best class. Those guys are now. Dan Mullen's best class had four guys that never played a played a snap. The only <laughs> two players left from that class 
are Zipperer and Kingsley, who have been largely ineffective. So you had Elam. Mike, you got something you want to add to that? All right. Billy Napier, you want to, you want to say he hasn't won in Florida? Yes. Has he won? Absolutely. Oh, that's why he has a Florida job. So there, that, there's that. Um, now for the uh, recruiting. Mullen's best class came when he when he inherited um, some of Max guys. Average was a 90.75. Our best class, obviously, is before Rashada, 92.12. Yeah, you have it. Say that number again. You kind of went out. Say it again. Ninety-two point one two. That was this year, and it's always going to be better next year. You see what we're doing, and this, and this is with all, all the debacles and everything, so on and so forth. That's that's including Rashad, I want to say, but the, the, the difference is there. Billy can recruit, and if Billy was recruiting at the time of Mullen without NIL, it's 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 built. Yeah. For you know, yeah. at the annual top three five class next cycle, we're, I'm expecting worst case top five class, but we obviously as a program and this institution needs to get our need to get our act in order. But to say one he hasn't won is not true. He's the one at the power five level, but he's also turned down jobs because he's won at a power five level. He turned down two SEC jobs to, to, before he took Florida, South Carolina, and Auburn, and then he he's recruiting top fifty quarterbacks. Top fifty overall players. So I mean, I don't. I just don't understand. You know, the whole he can't recruit. He's stuff that like Saban, uh, Kirby, and Lockers. It's come on. All right, this is from my boy Justin Wood, uh, who asks good questions every week. Uh, this one's for you, Mike, and Hershey. You can comment on these too. Uh, what do you guys think of, would be the next guy to commit to us for twenty four class? We kind of answered that when um, from off Twitter, Justin. And your second part, you said, what do you guys think? Thoughts on Sam Heward, uh, and would you guys think he would be a good pivot for missing on Rashad? I don't think Sam Heward's coming out here. I mean, it's just here and there. Also, he's been in the portal for a minute now, and I hadn't heard one word about him taking anywhere, so it doesn't for seem guys, like – For the people who don't know him, can you say tell where he's from and that part hurts? I think he's up from, from Washington. around Washington. Yeah, yeah. he was Washington. committed previously committed to Washington – I don't think he's and, – and you know what? I'm tired of going after quarterbacks from clear across the country right now. I just – I need a break, man. <laughs> and he – I mean, he's not from California, so it doesn't matter. If you remember Mike, I mean, Mike will tell you. He's got to be from California. Otherwise, it's, it's not worth the gas. California, Texas, Georgia. But, I mean, it just may go down to Texas, Georgia. Just some last question. Just last question. Quit wasting that gas mileage, man, on, the, on these guys. <laughs> This is the last question. Uh, Justin had a second question, and I think we kind of talked about it off air uh, because I I feel like Justin on this one. What do you guys? And we talked. We I think he asked this. Somebody asked this last week. If the Georgia has three quarterbacks on on uh, on their roster right now, Carson Beck, who you know I think uh, we recruited him when we got AR, and you have Gunnar Stockton, uh, who's the other guy, and I forget the other quarterback's name. Y'all remember his name? Is it? Uh, he has a Van Griff, I couldn't remember. Chase, Chase Vandergriff, I think. Yeah. He's a, he's a ginger, uh, so I wouldn't count him. <laughs> you got three guys there that will be battling for one spot. And those guys, this, they, this, none of them is a true freshman. So if somebody goes in the portal, let's say it's Gunner, because right now from what I heard, uh, Beck seems like he has the lead right now going to spring before they even do spring. Do you go after one of those guys if they, I, if they come out? Here's what I think will happen at Georgia. I think that Vandergriff will probably try to go into spring and win that job over Beck. And if he doesn't, I think you'll see him transfer. I don't know if we'll go after him or not. I probably doubt it. He's probably going to – I mean, we'll probably have our situation sorted out by then. Um, that being said, we know Kirby's stubborn as hell about quarterbacks. He's going to play the guy he had using as a backup all year. That's the way the guy runs things. He goes with the guy he's comfortable with. Obviously, Beck is the guy he's comfortable with. I mean, until George, until Kirby doesn't play a guy from the state of Georgia. So you're going with Beck. I mean, yeah, but he's played yeah. Beck. All, he's played Beck all yeah. season. That's what I was saying. Beck is going in there with the But he Beck's played a lot of snaps this he last has, season. Yeah, you're right. He has. 
and and looked very effective in those snaps. Well, granted, they're in blowout. Yeah, I hope he, I, listen, listen, if, he, if he plays either a guy with cankles or or a jet a redhead, I'm all for it. Okay. And this is what he he's a redshirt junior, so he's been there four years. So yeah, and and, and Kirby, we know Kirby's stubborn about his quarterbacks, but hey, I mean the dude's won two championships. Right now, I can't much criticize anything the dude does. It's yep. yeah, winners win, and the rest of us chase. And right now, we're a chase. And we need to um, improve a lot of stuff before we start worrying about Georgia's quarterbacks. <laughs> but no, yeah. to answer that question, I don't. I don't think we'll be in play for whatever kid transfers out of that room. And hey, two, they may all stay. <clears throat> excuse me, they may all stay. The guy's got a hell of a way of convincing quarterbacks to stay in that room. I mean, <laughs> he's had three guys sitting there all season behind Stetson. You know, hey. Yeah. Whatever he's got in the water, it's working. Probably it's just championships. But thank you guys. That's that's it for the part of the people. Uh, questions for the week. As Hersh already said, we're going to do it a little bit differently. Only put that on YouTube and have a separate uh, video for that. So I'll start the questions earlier this week, guys. This week, guys, I'll start Saturday and I'll uh, share it again uh, during the week uh, again so we can get as many as we can come through and that way we can do a lot of research into some of the, the other questions that you guys have that need a, uh, more in-depth answers. Uh, so we'll do that for you guys as well. So look out for that uh, on our Twitter and our Facebook page as we uh, start the part of the people uh, separate YouTube video. Yes, sir. Thank you guys so much for all your questions. We appreciate it, man. The interactions make this even better. We look forward to like we said, branching out, making a separate little episode where we can answer these questions. And like we said, guys, YouTube exclusive. So if you're not already subscribed to the YouTube channel, respect our decision. Go drop us a subscribe. We really, really appreciate it. It'll help us a great deal. Even if you don't use YouTube, you got a YouTube account set up. Jump on there, dust it off, hit subscribe on us, log out. That's all That's all we, we need, man. It'll, it'll help us out a great deal, like I said. Even if you don't know what a YouTube is, <laughs> we'd appreciate it. <laughs> Mike, you got anything to add before we drop out of here? You know, to this day, always remember Bateman's got us, followed by Strong and Forever, sign our Scott. <laughs> sign our Scott. And credit to our man, CJ. CJ has dropped us a new hashtag. Because, you know, obviously this is our quarterback going forward. So, as of now, next season, it merts so good, baby. Oh, I, like <laughs> I, I thought I had one I, that I saw like, like merts mania, but no, that's. It ooh. merts so good. We're going to roll out the shirts. <laughs> Kudos All, right. To All right, Wes, take us home. I appreciate it, Hirsch. Uh, again, to piggyback on what Hirsch was just concluding with, guys, we, we're not saying we're getting rid of our. Apple Podcasts and other platforms. The regular podcasts will be on there, just the pile of the people. So Every we want to make sure we clarify that. So we're still going to have the regular podcast on all the platforms, just the pile of the people. Your fans' questions that will be just on YouTube. And as always, we are pod uh, podcast that supports our troops. So if you're a veteran, I know any veterans out there that have any questions about uh, any disability benefits as far as how to acquire them and get them as far as the VA is concerned, please hit us up and we will answer those questions for you again thank you guys we love the support we love the interactions we love the questions that's why we're doing this separate part for you guys because you guys will make make us want to do this so we really really appreciate you guys you guys say anything that i missed something no Any man good? that's it as All always right, guys we love you we appreciate you thank you so much and until next week guys go gators go gators <laughs>